I was laying up in my upper bunk, and um, I just the, the headaches started coming again, and they were just even more severe than they had been, um, to the point where uh, I, I didn't even know what to do with. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I got out of the bed and I thought, well, I'll just go outside and get some fresh air. Maybe that'll, you know, help the pain go away or maybe clear my head. Um, now this is in England, where and it was a foggy day out there. In England, the fog just get I mean, it gets so thick, uh, you can't, you literally cannot see 20 feet from you, sometimes even less than that. But this day, I mean, it, there was trees all around us, outside the barracks where I was at. There was trees all over, and I could not see the trees. I mean, it was just, um, it was, they were like maybe 30 feet away from me, and I couldn't see the tops of the trees. So it was just, everything was like this dark gray, the nighttime. But I went outside and I thought, okay, I'll just get some fresh air, something to clear the head. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I took all sorts of, you know, um, excedrins and, and what have you, you know, uh, for the headaches and migraine stuff, and nothing would hurt, help it. And I went outside, and it was, like I said, it was October in, in uh, England. It was cold, damp, and very foggy. And I would be outside for maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds trying to get some fresh air. And it was so cold, I'd come back in, and my shirt, I had a t-shirt on, my shirt, I could literally take it and wring it and get water out of it. That's how thick the fog was. And I come back inside, and it, it was, the pain was still there, and I go, okay, I'll go back outside, and went outside, back inside, this went on. I don't even know how many times I did this. Um, but I just kept going back and forth, back and forth, nothing was helping it, and it was just increasingly getting worse. And I literally felt like I was dying. I, I really think I was dying. And so finally, as a, a last resort, I just ran outside the barracks and just kept going as far as I could go, um, probably maybe 300 yards or so, and I just fell down on my knees. Now again, I still cannot see a thing around me beyond 20 feet. It's just this thick gray. So I'm surrounded by gray and I'm on, on my knees, and I remember just looking up at the Lord, or looking up in the sky, and just saying, God, I don't know if you're real or you're not real, but you've got to help me. I'm dying here. I mean, I was pleading for my life, and at this point, I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know really much about. I've heard, you know, about God, and I heard a little bit about Jesus, but I didn't know who they were. I just knew that I was dying, and I thought, well, i got to reach out to somebody, and I thought, well, I'll reach out to them. So I just fell on my knees and just said, Lord, I said, you know, if you're real, I don't know if you are, but if you're real, you've got to help me. I am dying here. And this is the God's honest truth. As I was kneeling on the ground and still could not see the trees around me, all of a sudden this tunnel opened up. And I'm, the tunnel was probably maybe, I don't know, it seemed it was like the three or four feet wide. And it just opened up from where I was kneeling on the ground all the way up into the sky and I could see the stars in the circles like a tunnel and I could see the stars up there I mean it was clear, crystal clear what I was looking at and I remember looking around and at the you know the rest of the scenery and it was still just this dense gray I couldn't see a thing I couldn't see the tree 20 feet from me but I could see the stars thousands of miles away from me and I remember just being in an awe with that but what hit me was as, I, as that t tunnel opened up and I could see the stars, I felt like, it felt like God said to me, oh, is that your problem? And he just like flicked it off my shoulder like this thing that was killing me, that was crushing me, taking my life, was like a piece of lint to him. I was like, oh, okay, there you go. And all of a sudden, everything was gone. I mean, I was fine. The pain was gone. The headaches were gone. Every, and I mean, I remember just looking up and just in, in amazement. I, it was, I was in amazed that I could see the stars through this fog. I was amazed that the pain was gone instantaneously that had been killing me uh, literally for days. But I was more amazed I met God. I walked back to the barracks, and the whole time I was back to the barracks, I didn't think about the, the tunnel, I didn't think about the pain being gone. My mouth was on the floor, I was dragging my mouth on the floor in awe, just thinking, I met God. God is real and I just met him. And 
I tell you, I, I went back to the barracks and I was trying to sort all this out and I didn't know any other Christians, so there was nobody else I could talk to. Um, it was months after that, just a few months after that, I finally got discharged, went back to the United States, and I wanted to know. I wanted to know who this was I just met, who this was that just cleansed me, cleared me of this. And I remember picking up Bibles, and I, I, got, I got a regular Bible, I got um, a, a, about three or four different kinds of Bibles. I didn't know which one, which one was white, I mean which, I didn't know anything about King James or any of that. I just picked up different Bibles, because I would read them, and I'd read like a, a paragraph, and after I'd read the paragraph, I'd go, what are they talking about? This doesn't make any sense. What is this? And I go and flip through some more pages, read another paragraph, and it, it was like reading another language. I mean, it just it made no sense to me. So I, would, I ended up going to different churches. I went to you know, Methodist churches, Lutheran, um, you know, Catholic churches, uh, synagogues, I even talked to people with, in Buddha and all that kind of stuff. All I knew was I met a supreme being. God, but I, I met somebody, he cured me, and I wanted to know who he was. And everybody was telling me their own different versions. I even got the truth. I mean, I went to, you know, like I say, the baptism and all that, and they were telling me all about Jesus, but for me, it was like, nah, it's, it's something else. It's something else. You know, I, was, I don't know what I was looking for, but whatever it was they were telling me, I was looking for something else. And I did this for about six, eight months, and finally just got frustrated and said, I, okay, I, I don't know. There's a God out there, but I don't know who he is. I guess one day I'll find out. And I just kind of dropped it and continued on with my life. A few months after that, uh, my cousin, who I grew up with um, in the States over there, we were bad kids. We did a whole bunch of bad things and stuff. Um, he became a born-again Christian. He went to Vietnam as well, but he went out with the California. And I heard that he was flying in from California, and he wanted to see me. And I'm in, over in New York, the other side of the United States, about 3,000 miles away. So I said, oh, great, I get to see my cousin. I hadn't seen him in years, you know. We hung out together. He was like my brother. So he comes over, and um, as soon as he arrives there, you know, he hugs and all that kind of stuff. And it was a whole big family reunion thing. And uh, his name is Albert. And Albert says, um, he says, I need to speak to you alone. Can we, is there some place we can go? And I says, sure. Uh, across the street to where we were was a graveyard. Um, and so we hopped over the fence, you know, we're young kids, we hopped over the fence and sat over uh, by the tombstones over there, we sat on the ground. And, um, you know, I, I said, what is it, Al? And he starts telling me about Jesus Christ. Now here's the really interesting thing about this. This is why I say, I did not come to God, God came to me. I was searching for the Lord. I mean, I didn't know what it was. I knew I met God. And I knew that he cured me, but I didn't know who he was. And I, all the searching and stuff that I did, the Bible made no sense to me. People talking to me made no sense to me. But now, here I'm sitting with my cousin, and he's telling me the same thing I heard before. But the difference is, as he was telling me this, I knew like Paul says, you know that you know that you know. I knew this was the truth, and I accepted every word that he had said. And then he says, you know, do you want to accept the Lord? And I says, yeah, I do. I said, but, you know, it's something that I, I feel that I need to do in private, you know, by myself. This is between me and God. And Albert says, well, I understand that, not a problem. And uh, we went to, went to bed, went to sleep, and... Um, I accepted the Lord that night, and the next morning I got up and I told Albert, and he was all happy, and, you know, he told me, he says, uh, he says, oh, he says, you know, the one thing you need to do is, is to get a Bible and read the Word every day, because that's your spiritual food. Otherwise, you'll just wither away. You need to, now that you've been born again, you need to grow. You need to feed yourself, and this is how you feed yourself, um, is through the Word of God. It's not food. It's you know, the Word of God is your food. And I was like all excited, I said, oh yeah, great, 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 great. And, they, and he had a Bible and, and he gave it to me and he says, you know, here, you can use mine until you get your own. And I picked up the Bible and I started reading it and I got through about half the page. Praise God. I got through half the page. And all of a sudden it hit me, it dawned on me. I understood it. 
I understood what God was saying. I mean, here, before that, this is only months before, before that I couldn't understand a paragraph, and now I understood through the Holy Spirit, I understood everything that he was saying. And it was, there was I never, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't do any of that. It's just the Holy Spirit, when I accepted the Lord, the Holy Spirit came into me and gave me my first miracle that I could read the Word of God and understand it. I'm sorry I'm blubbering like an idiot, but, um, and, and to me that was just miraculous. And from that, on, from that day on, I read the Word and got stronger in the Lord. And it wasn't too much after that that I was coming home from, from work. I was working at a, a farm and garden center. And uh, it was a long drive home, and I'm driving home, and I'm being filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, my whole body is just, I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to burst. I'm just so full of God's love. And I get home, and I, I fall on my knees on, on the, on the, um, in the, in the basement cellar where I was doing some paintings. I was painting like landscapes and florals and that sort of thing. And I just said, Lord, I said, you're so good to me. Let me give something back to you. You have given me so much. Let me give to you something. Is there something I can give you? And he said, use the talent I gave you. And that was the art. And I started painting. Matter of fact, that day I did a painting up. To this day, it's, it's one of the paintings I can honestly say I never painted. Every stroke that was on it, there was nothing in my head. I, did, I just started, he told me to start painting. And I started painting, and the brush strokes were coming out, and I had nothing in my head, so it was, I didn't know what I was painting, because there was nothing there. I wasn't thinking about what to paint. I was just moving. And before I knew it, the whole painting was done, probably within a couple hours of Jesus' face in the sky. And it was a painting I called The Second Coming. And there's a whole story on that, and maybe I can get into that at some other point. But from that point on, I started painting for the Lord and just wanting to, using my talent, as he said, for his glory. And praise God, it has been. And I just wanted to share that with you. This is real. If you don't know Jesus, this is real. It's a real thing. <laughs>